What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Dylan, the Techno Giz Guy, and today I am going to show you guys how to monitor all your home services completely for free. Okay, everyone. So in my home lab, I use a service called Uptime Kuma. This is the GitHub page for Uptime Kuma. It will be linked down below. But before we set Uptime Kuma up, I want to show you how I have mine set up. So this is my production Uptime Kuma. So going through here, you can see I have a lot of containers, I have VMs, I have physical machines, I have pings for Cloudflare and Google, I have pie holes, I have a VIP for my pie holes, which I plan on doing a video about eventually. Basically everything in my home lab is in here. Although this needs some updating. Audio bookshelf is not actually down, it's just been migrated to a different server. Right off the bat, let's fix this. So, uh, all right, so now just like that, you can see that my audio bookshelf is working now. So after I fix the IP address in my production, uh, SQL is still down. I got to fix that. But to be fair, the whole Docker server is down. Probably wondering how am I measuring grid power? Simple. I have a smart plug that is in one of my outlets and I just ping it. That's it. It's not on an outlet that's battery backed up or anything. So if I can't ping it, I know that the power is out. It works. All the different stuff here you can see i have different categories so some of these are containers some of these are labeled as production some of them are labeled core uh, all of these mean something to me in my stack the idea is that you can do it though so i can jump into my docker vm instance here although the vm is up um but docker is not actually running on this vm uh this vm is actually broken but that's a, another video for another day anyway you can see the graph here. You can see the data of when it was down and all that and for how long. Um, and you can actually configure all of these. And I'll show you how to do that. The other thing you can do, though, is you can have this set up to route messages through Telegram, email. Uh, I think they support Slack. Uptime Kuma also has a built-in Cloudflare D service manager. So you can actually just import your key from Cloudflare if you're using Cloudflare as a reverse proxy method and it will manage that. So that's really cool as well to have that built in. All right, enough talk. Let's set this up. So from your computer, if you're running Docker, if you followed along in our last video on installing Docker on your desktop, you're going to do Windows key R. You can type in CMD. Once you're in your command shell, we're going to type in bash. Now we are in a bash terminal. From here, I'm going to run this Docker command. So we're going to download that, and I will have the link to the GitHub in the description. All you have to do is go to the GitHub, copy that one-liner, paste it into your terminal, and you'll have a Docker container spun up. All right, it's spun up. So now we should be able to go to localhost 3001, and we're in Uptime Kuma. Okay, once we're in Uptime Kuma, it's going to have you do a setup. I'm going to throw in a quick little username here. My password is totally not going to be password1. Once you're done, you are presented by this lovely page here. So you have no monitors. Before we add monitors, I want to poke some other places first. So let's come up here, go to settings. And now we can adjust different settings for Uptime Kuma. So first off, you can put in a Steam API key. So if you want to monitor the uptime of a game server in Steam, you can do that. It's at a primary base URL. This is for things like uh, doing reverse proxies, DNS, things like that. Uh, I'm going to leave all the general settings as default. Go to appearance. In appearance, we can select between uh, light, dark, auto. Let's change the different themes. Uh, I'm going to keep this on dark. But just so that way it never goes to light mode, I'm going to manually select dark. But it's good that auto selected dark. You can change a lot of the different settings in here. You can come into notifications. Notifications is where we are going to set up actual alerts. So. Here, you can set up Telegram. Here, we'll go through a little list here. So, you can set up all kinds of stuff into this. So, I use Telegram as well as an email client because I actually pay for an SMTP service so I can send emails uh, in my home lab because I'm that much of a nerd. It's really cheap, though, and I'm probably going to make a video on it because it's really great. You can go to Twilio if, you, if that's your thing, or you can do webhook calls, uh, Signal, Slack, Push Bulletin. Notify Teams, which is cool. You do a Google chat. You can have this report directly to Home Assistant. Uh, you can send it through Discord, Alert Now. I'm not sure. Some of, the, some of these are bigger than other places. Line Messenger, I know. Uh, point being, there's a lot of different ways that you're able to 
send notifications. They also have some regional ones. These look like they are like Chinese or French. Um, I'm not sure what PL is. If you're using a program that supports topics, like I use Telegram a lot for these messages. Uh, I use one big channel for all my different bots to talk to me. Uh, you can actually specify a thread ID, like a topic ID, so that way if you're in a group chat, the bot will keep its messages to a specific channel. So within my Telegram, I actually have it set up to where there's one channel in the group for Home Lab just dedicated to Uptime Kuma. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to set up any of the different notification types. Um, Uptime Kuma has a ton of documentation on it. And all you have to do most of the time is just go to whatever service you're using, grab your API keys, and put them in. If you're messing with that kind of thing, you probably already know how to do it. Or if you already have an SMTP server, that's really easy. You'll just select SMTP, fill out your SMTP credentials, and be on in your, your merry way. Reverse proxy, here you can see that the Cloudflare tunnel is installed. So it comes as a part of the Uptime Kuma database. Uh, it's not running. You can paste your token from Cloudflare right here and click start. And then now this will act as your Cloudflare reverse tunnel. So now you have your uptime monitoring and a reverse tunnel for reverse proxying all in one place. I don't know if you want to do that, you can do it, or you could even use it as a backup. And then if you are using a reverse proxy, you want to make sure that you check this trust proxy. Uh, you want to always trust X forward headers. Now, if you're setting up advanced proxy stuff and you're like a real network engineer and you're doing this properly, you may not need to do that. But most of us in the home lab space are reverse proxying our stuff. You shouldn't be port forwarding because that's really unsafe and open as minimal ports to your network as possible, guys. But yeah, you want to keep that on because that otherwise you'll get errors when you try to connect to it. Tags, so you can come in here. This is where you can make new tags. Uh, you can give them colors. So also, if you want to do a custom color here, these are hex colors. So you can just put any hex color in here. So I think black is that. Any hex color you can put in there and make if the stock colors don't flow to your fancy. Monitor history. This is just going to be about the database stuff. So Uptime Kuma uses a SQL Lite database. So it's not something you have to worry about or manage. It's just a file somewhere within the Docker file uh, where it keeps. Uh, and it, here you can say, see that it says, keep the history data for 180 days, set to zero for infinite. I'm going to leave this default, 180 days seems reasonable. Docker hosts, you can set up different Docker hosts on your network. This is really cool. Uh, you can do it over socket or TCP IP. The really cool thing about that is then you can actually manage your individual containers as well as Docker itself on the machine, plus the machine. So you get really a lot of monitoring there. Security, all this is, is just to change passwords. Uh, Uptime Kuma does support two-factor authentication. It does support two-factor authentication, which is really cool. They have an API. Uh, I don't really know what you can do with it. I've never messed with it, but they have one. Proxies, another thing I've never really messed with in Uptime Kuma. I run a dedicated proxying service in my home lab that I'll probably do a video about at some point. Uh, so yeah, I don't mess with that. Uptime Kuma for me is just an Uptime monitor. Backup which apparently is deprecated, so I'm not even going to talk about it. And then about, and that's it. So let's add a monitor. When you add a monitor, you get the, the first thing you select is a monitor type. And you can pick a lot of different things here. You can see that Steam Game Server, MQTT, you can do SQL, DBs, uh, you can do HTTP, pings, ports, HTTPS, uh, you can do group, you can do DNS, you can do Docker containers, uh, browser engines. I'm going to do a simple ping. I am just going to set up my router, so gateway, and then the host name is going to be, for me, it's going to be heartbeat interval. So I'm going to have this check to see if my gateway is alive every 120 seconds, every two minutes. If it is down for whatever reason, uh, how many times do I want it to retry before it sends a notification? So I want to say once, because if my gateway is down, I, I want to know quickly. So if the gateway is missing a heartbeat for two minutes, it will try again one more time, meaning it gets another two minutes. And if it still does not respond to a ping within two minutes, then I will get my notification, however you have that set up. One really cool thing you can do is there's an upside down mode, so it flips the status. So if the service is reachable, then it shows it as down. 
I haven't used it, but it's cool that it's there. I can see why you would need that. Now, here's two we want to be careful with. Heartbeat retry interval and resend notification if down X times consecutively. Right now, resend is disabled. If you send this, set this to 10. So what this is going to do is it's going to send you the notification, and then it's just going to keep pinging it by the same rule. So two minutes, another two minutes, another two minutes. And because I set this to 10, after it has hit that two-minute mark 10 times now, it's going to send another notification, and then another one, until that service is back. Once that service comes back up, then it will ping you and give you a notification saying, hey, we're back up. I don't have a monitor or anything like that set up yet, so save that. And you can see like that, it's up. Let's add another one. Let's say I want to do, I want to monitor my Plex server. Okay, so I'm going to select the TCP port. We're going to enter Plex. The host name for my Plex server is 10.0.1.0.5. And the port for Plex is 32400. I'm going to have this check every 300 seconds. Have it retry once, and I'll have it, I'll set that to five. That's not Plex. Sorry, guys. I changed the network schemes around a while ago, so I that's the old IP. As soon as I change that, now we are going to see that it. So we had that yellow pending. As soon as I changed it, now it's green. We could even go in and break it, as well as if you know you have like scheduled downtime coming up for something, you can come in here and pause this. It will ask you. Now, if this goes down, you will not get a notification. See the graphs even all reflect that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we set up Uptime Kuma. It's a great service. I've been using it for probably a little over a year now, uh, and it's really nice, especially once you start getting a bigger home lab and you're running more stuff. You want to know when something goes down so you can fix it. Uptime Kuma, it works. I know there's other stuff out there. I haven't played with them, but you know this is where uh, this is what I like. And if something comes along that has better features, works better. I'm happy to try it so if you enjoyed this video please leave a like if you're new to the channel please subscribe if you want to talk or have a discussion or any questions or concerns leave a comment down below and uh yeah see you in the next one